Uh, and if it ain't foreign, it's born, says Trevor Lawrence, most overvalued quarterback in the NFL. Let's roll on to those Colts. 1 p.m. Eastern, Indiana, Indianapolis Colts, 4-3, 1-2 on the road to Houston Texans, 5-2, 3-0 oh, home at Energy Stadium in Houston, Texas. Let's get into the line history here. We have another big favorite. The Texans open up at minus six and a half. Uh, within six hours, this went back to five and a half and then jumped back up to six and a half again. Then it did bounce back to five and a half once again. It did that yesterday at 3.34 p.m., back up to six and a half, and now it's at five and a half again. So we've had a one-point move towards the Indianapolis Colts. And again, that was that way. So let's go over to BetMGM. BetMGM opened this up uh, with... Texans minus six. Their first move was to six and a half. They're just back at six right now. So Ben MGM's at six. Uh, Caesars Sportsbook is at six. Bet Rivers is at five and a half. That five and a half is juice to the Texans. Then we have the total opening up at 47 and a half, dropping down to 46, bouncing back up to 46 and a half and closing at 40 or ending at 46. That's at Bet Rivers. Uh, Bet MGM, this total. Opened up at 47 and a half, dropped down to 45 and a half. So at, it's at, at Bet MGM, it's down to 45 and a half right now. So it's a two point move towards the under. Interesting. Let's take a look at the cash flow. Uh, Drewski says for some reason, CJ only play better at home. CJ is missing an absolute monster in Nico Collins. Uh, you know, he there was no better wide receiver in the NFL, at, you know, through the first, what, five games of the year. We have 80% of the tickets, 91% of the cash on the Texans. We have 23% of the tickets and 38% of cash on the under. And the line's moving in that direction. And I get why it is. Hmm. Let's start with the Colts. Passing offense, 17th in the league at 206.3 yards per game. We know it's better with Flacco at quarterback. Rushing offense, 14th in the league at 123 yards per game. We expect Jonathan Taylor to be back this week. Now, we'll go over that a little more. Red zone offense, 18th in the league, 54.2%. Third down offense, 11th in the league at 40.9%. This Colts defense has been really bad. A pass defense, 23rd. They allow 221.1 yards per game. Only one team in the league allows more rushing yards against them. Colts allow 159.9. Red zone defense is 25th. They allow touchdowns, 63.6% of red zone visits. And their third down defense is 25th in the league, allowing conversions 44.6% of the time. Colts coming off an ugly 16-10 win at home over the Dolphins. It was Anthony Richards' first game back after a three-game absence with the injured right hip. He did not look good. 10-24, 129 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. He also ran 14 times for 56 yards. He also fumbled. Uh, Birdie is on the Colts plus six. Rams, Jags, Colts for him. And I get it. Uh, I get it. I really, really do. I really do. Uh, Pittman... Led receivers with three catches for 63 yards. Uh, Tyler Goodson looked pretty good with Jonathan Taylor out with a high ankle sprain. Uh, Tyler Goodson, 14 carries for 51 yards, touchdown. Steichen on Monday said he's optimistic that Taylor will resume practicing this week. Uh, he knows how important this game is against the Texans. And remember, I have the Colts to make the playoffs at plus 140, which isn't looking that bad at 4-3. and three. But when you would prefer to have Joe Flacco quarterback, it's probably not that good. Big Fat Jack says Texans absolutely smash the Colts. I don't know how they do with their injuries. I don't know how. I mean, I no, no one's questioning whether they're a better football team. But all of a sudden, you take all these key players off of the Texans, and it becomes a little more even. So the Colts offense put up 284 total yards, 4.7 yards per play, 4 13 on third down, 1-3 three in the red zone. They weren't good. They were fortunate that they were going up against the Dolphins' lackluster offense without Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, the defenses looks much stronger with Quiddy Pay and Kenny Moore back. And do you know who's expected to be there this week? DeForest Buckner. Now, you'll have to follow the practices here, but that's one hell of an addition to the core. Passing rush finished with two sacks, five quarterback hits, held the Dolphins to 6 of 15 on third down, 1 of 3 in the red zone. Let's talk about the Texans. Uh, they're passing offense, ninth in the league, 20, 27.6 yards per game. Well, we know it's not that without Nico Collins out there. Their rushing offense is 15th in the league, 122.1 yards per game. You could say it's a little better than that with a healthy Joe Mixon. That's fair. Red zone offense is fourth in the league at 70%. Again, taking some big pieces out. It was just Nico, man. He's, he's so 
tall and big and fast. He's just perfect. He's a perfect wide receiver. Uh, their third down offense, 14th league at 40%. Their pass defense, fourth in league, 167.7 yards allowed. Their rush defense, eighth, allowing 109.3 yards per game. Their red zone defense, this Texans red zone defense, is third worst in the NFL. They're allowing touchdowns 72.2% of the time, and that's not going to change without all these monsters in the lineup. Their third down defense, 13th league at 34.8%. Coming off a 24-22 loss to the Packers on the last second Green Bay field goal, time expired. What did it show us? It showed us that the Texans have a ton of heart. Their coach has a ton of heart. It shows us there's a very good football team. When they're healthy, they might be a you know elite football team. They were missing five defensive starters. Mario Edwards with the suspension. Uh, it's a four-game suspension for violating the substance of abuse policy, substances of abuse. He'll be eligible for reinstatement uh, after the Houston game against Detroit on November 10th. They have Aziz al Shair, who you guys know I just think is – when he was – Spying Josh Allen, I was I couldn't believe how good he was. It was about as good as I see the linebacker handle that spot. Henry Toe Toe is their leading tackler. Quarterback Kamari Laster, safety Jimmy Ward. Now they're used to Laster and Ward out now. Uh, Robert Woods and Steve Sims. Now they could get a lot of these guys back, other than Nico Collins, who's on IR, and Mario Edwards Jr. So you'll have to keep an eye on the injury report. The loss snapped the Texans' three-game winning streak. C.J. Stroud was ten of twenty-one for a career low eighty-six yards. Look, he's still got them the opportunity to win the football game, uh, you know. and uh, But I think th that's what we're going to get used to because Stephon Diggs might not be a number one anymore. Dalton Schultz led receivers with uh, 115 yards and two touchdowns. Couldn't be 115 yards because he only threw for 86 yards. It was one catch. He had one catch. I forget. I don't know why I have 115 yards. That's a clear mistake here with my uh, note-taking. Uh, Joe, Mi Joe Mixon ran 25 times for 115 yards and two touchdowns. That was it. Okay, so uh, Dalton Schultz led with one catch, I believe, for 25 yards. And Joe Mixon ran 25 times for 115 yards, two touchdowns. Texans were 2 of 4 in the red zone. The defense kept them in it. Pass rush had three sacks and six quarterback hits. Neville Hewitt and Kalen Bullock had interceptions. Packers did go for 2 for 2 in the red zone because that's what teams do off of them. Look, I, uh, I'm i with Birdie. I want the Colts here. Take it away, Troy. Floor is yours. Let's get it, Jimmy. I, I agree with you completely. Clearly, there's something wrong with this Texans team. Obviously, you have a lot of injuries going on. and But week after week, even dating back to week one of this season, we continue to see uh, subpar performances. No Nico is a huge problem. Stroud, 10 for 21 for 86 yards. What the, completely uh, mind-blown by that statistic. If it weren't for Joe Mixon, surprisingly, this past week, along with some turnovers, they would have gotten dubbed. They won the turnover battle three to nothing, but they still lost the game. Now that right there is truly unacceptable. Um, and what I see, what I see is their offensive game plan consists of routes that take way too long to develop. Parlay that with a pretty bad offensive line because they haven't been performing, and you're going to run into some issues. And not only like it, on the other hand, you got the Colts, who I think were also lucky to win that game, incredibly lucky to, lucky to cover the three. And I went from extremely bullish on the Colts prior to the season to extremely bearish. And I don't know where I'm at right now because they are getting DeForest Buckner. They are getting Jason T or Jonathan Taylor back. And those are big pieces to add. They caught a break this past week. But, I mean, they have two glaring issues. You have Anthony Richardson, who's been not performing at an NFL caliber. And you have this defense, which sits in cover three and apparently refused to mix things up. As long as those two variables don't change, it's hard to take this team seriously in the long run and being true competitors. But despite my dismay for the Colts team, they're, only, they're, they're the only way I'm looking in this matchup. They're getting Buckner. They're getting Taylor. That's a big deal. The Texans are obliterated with injuries. No Nico being the biggest missing piece. And they always give this Texans team a good game. They went to Houston last year and smacked them. Um and look at look what the Texans have done this season. They haven't won a game by more than six points outside of one game against the Patriots with a rookie in his first start. I already moved. I moved on the Colts plus six at minus 110. I'm considering a play on the money line because here's the six, and it looks like it might start ticking down into that five, five and a half range. And uh, I'll be forced, my hand will be forced to play the money line with the Colts. Close my eyes, make a bet. Yeah, I'm right with you. I'm right with you. And, and there's cappers on the other side here, and I get it. 
I can understand it, but and, and you guys, the the Texans can get healthier this week. They can, and that would be extremely helpful for them. But the Nico Collins being out is the biggest part of this football game. Now you could say no, the biggest part of this football game is that Anthony Richardson is not good enough to get you a win on the road in Texas, and that would be a valid statement. But I'm going to be on the Colts as soon as the show is over. I, I'm not going to mess with the money line.